Good morning. This video is going to look at that natural childbirth thing, thing and Brian makes a big deal about it. It compares the thing with, with Mary and Joseph. In Exodus, it talked about midwives who were delivering the Israeli children. So where does he get this bizarre idea that the husband's supposed to back, you know, goes back here. Like I said, we're going to get into more detail, but the fact is, another thing a lot of people have said is, well, if you, if you start to have children or if you're going to have a child, you're going to change your tune very quickly about the insurance thing. Uh, no, actually we aren't. Um, you see, and again, I'm not saying this out of pride. I'm not saying this to put anybody down who's been through the hospital birthing thing or whatever, but, um, the Lord, through his power, through the wisdom that he can give, when you put your faith in him, when you live by the King James Bible, there are no hospital births in the King James Bible, no cesarean section births or whatever else. There are midwives. There are midwives. He's saying not to have midwives. Through his power, he enabled us to have Oliver, over a year ago, in this very room, right over there, you're not going to see it on the camera, but right over there on an air mattress. And the Lord helped me to deliver my son, myself, no midwife, no doctors. Why no midwife? Midwives are in the Bible. Why no midwife? That's totally scriptural. That the uh, uh, in uh, Exodus. Uh, let's see here. Exodus 1, 16, and 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Sophia, and the other name was Pua. Uh, and he said, uh, Why do you, when do you do the office of midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools? See, they're not supposed to have them on the bed. They're supposed to have them on the stools. That's Bible. <laughs> you know, he picks and chooses what he wants to pick. Um, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then you shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. So what's he talking about? He compares himself to Joseph and Mary. Midwives are totally scriptural. No vaccinations, nothing. Okay. So it can be done. And ironically, too, it's kind of interesting because our son would have been conceived in December and born in September. Very ironic because that's exactly the timing that the Lord Jesus was born. Okay. Why does he do that? Oh, isn't that ironic that he was born the same time Jesus was born? Kind of a neat thing. Uh, God's been very, very good to us. And again, you say, well, why are you doing this? Are you trying to rub it in people's faces? No. Brethren, you can live by the King James Bible. Yeah, and the King James Bible has midwives in it. It has midwives. It doesn't tell you you're supposed to have the husband deliver the baby. You don't have to say, well, that's the way they did it back then, but we don't do it that way anymore. You can live by God's word. You can trust this book and say, you know what? It says it. I can do it that way. That's the purpose of this video. Okay? So let's forget about anesthesia. <laughs> let's give up a, you know, next time you break a leg, you know, he had an appendix bust. He's talking about when he's a young man, he says this, it was amazing that his child, he went to the hospital. Just the hypocrisy this guy. The hypocrisy this guy. He had said in the earlier part of the video that it was a miracle they had this child because uh, his wife was out over in Iran and exposed to uh, uh, Iranian, Uranium stuff. He had an appendix bust. That's a death sentence. We went to a hospital for that. We're going to be showing a lot of things in this video about natural birthing. Because um, I know a lot of people probably have questions about it. There's a lot of information online. Uh, Lord helped me do quite a bit of research on this thing, on this topic. And a lot of it's new age, unfortunately. Again, you know, Satan is such a master at counterfeiting. Yeah. <laughs> Satan's such a master at counterfeiting that he will, he will take, you know, and he's... 14 months old going on 15 months, so he's, he's a big boy. But um, Satan is such a master of counterfeiting, he'll take things that are the Lord's and he'll twist them. 
a lot of witches get into herbal, you know, herbology and things, herbal it's cures. That's what it is, a trinity. Satan will counterfeit the trinity. And he just will bent out of shape because counterfeit religions are using the trinity and the symbols of the trinity when the trinity is a true concept. But that's what Satan does. He counterfeits Bibles. So now he's saying, well, he counterfeits natural birth, too. But that's okay. You're supposed to ignore that. Yeah, well, where did that come from? came from the Lord. God's the one who created the herbs, not witches. You know, a lot of people in the New Age will take home birthing, natural child birthing. And they, you know, it's, oh, it's so great and everything else. And it is great. But it's it should be, Christians should be the ones doing the home birthing. You know? Yeah, with, at least with midwives. At least with the midwives. That's scriptural. Nowhere is to say he compared he's comparing his thing to Mary and Joseph. As opposed to the normal way they would have birth back in the old testament was the fact they would have midwives at least to help with the birth. I mean midwives are all through the, the Bible, old and new testaments. I mean it I mean you have children being born in taxi cabs. That doesn't mean that children should be born in taxi cabs. That's how nutty this guy is. And again, you know, oh, well, this is impossible. This, this, you know, you shouldn't have done this. This was taking great risks. You know? I come again. from a medical establishment family, okay? Mm -hmm. My mother, Marie Carolyn Uller Kutra, is a medical goon and has been for over four decades. Yeah. She's talking about her mother now. Listen to this. And let, me, let me make a point. I got to make a point, though, on this. Okay? Let me finish my point. My point is that... You know, this this whole thing of, well, you took great risk having the child at home. Uh, we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit more about this and get into the study and things. But again, are you really trusting God? I mean, you know, can't God. Did he trust God when he went to the hospital with his appendix being busted? <laughs> Let's not use trust hospitals. You trust in God. God provide. Can't God take care of the situation? I mean, where was the midwife? Where was the doctor when Jesus was born? See? What are you talking about when Jesus was born? They compare his this kid being born to the birth of Jesus. Midwives are scriptural. So midwives is, is totally bona fide, at least midwives. In a stable. You know? Oh, that's so let's all have our children in stables. The mangers. Let's all, let's all, that's where we should have our children now. Because that's where Joseph and Mary had Lord Jesus Christ. Well, yes, but that's back then, but we're today. But aren't, isn't the mindset out there supposed to be that we're more intelligent today than they were back then? You see? It's... Uh, see what? We have uh, anesthesia. We have things to kill, have pain. We have ways of doing things better now than, we, than they did back then. But they had at least midwives. This guy's comparing his birth to like he's, he's to a Mary and Joseph. That's why it's just like there's a lot of problems out there among the professing Christian church. But uh, I just want to get into the thing. We're going to tell the story, and this video is being made for uh, young women that are not married. Something to consider if the Lord brings a husband into your life. Make um, sure he's of your nationality. Your exact same kindred and mm -hmm. make sure the lord is your matchmaker not man yep. not friends and family make sure you pray now see she said exact let's go back here point i got to make a point though on this no, okay let me finish my point made for uh young women that are not married something to consider if the lord brings a husband into your life make um, sure he's of your okay listen to her now your nationality your exact same kindred and exact same nationality same same kindred their argument was well we got we got we have a, a thing here that the, the problem with asian women and white men she's not making any distinction between the issue of asian women and white men like he, he's got some scientific proof she's going the issue of exact nationality kindred in other words germans marry germans french are supposed to marry french italians are supposed to marry italians Make sure the Lord is your matchmaker, not man, yeah. not friends and family. Make sure you pray fervently and effectually for the perfect match that the Lord provides for you. Yeah. Because and if you if you integrate 
racially speaking or kindredly speaking, you will have uh, childbearing problems. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you know, people... See, they, they mentioned that. See, he, the idea is, okay, what problems? And then he goes around and finds something with the, with the issue of oriental women and white. What problems are you going to have interracial? Obviously, obviously the uh, black and whites don't have a problem. There's nothing about dealing with that. Right off the bat, 10 minutes in, and they couldn't wait to get out the, oh, you have to marry your own race. People say, oh, that's racism or something. We're not saying that whites are superior to blacks or something like that. We're saying that there are... See, he, mis he mentioned the Orientals. Oriental. Like he's using that thing as a basis. He uses that study in Stanford talking the problem that because Orientals have a, have a small small weight with Oriental men as opposed to white men. He's talking black, black and white people. Kindreds, different kindreds, but genetically, some are shorter, sm smaller in stature, and you get people that are huge. You know, you take somebody that's uh, and that could happen within your race. That could happen within within your particular race. That's not a particular thing between uh, within uh, between races. In your own race, you could have a bigger, a uh, small woman with a bigger man. Family like a Japanese person, and you you marry them to somebody like uh, that's African descent, a Hamite according to scripture. Uh, then you mentioned the blacks. I mentioned whites. <laughs> mentioned the whites. You're gonna have problems. There's gonna be problems. And and again, it's not that you know. God hates people that do that or whatever, and, and but you're you're making problems. And, and God's not going to bless the delivery process. And, and you, you read through the Old Testament, and God's telling the Jews, "Hey, don't go down there. Don't don't marry those people. Don't marry. Stay within your own kindreds." So yes, it is important. Okay, that's something that's it might not be popular, but you know, since when has the Bible been a popular book? So this is for young women who are looking to get married and then thinking about starting a family. We're going to show you the reasons why you should not consider, not even consider a hospital birth, okay? And don't get ahead of us because I know somebody's writing a comment right now. But I had to have a hospital birth or I would have died or something. Just hold on with that, okay? Don't answer the matter before you hear it. Secondly, this is also for young expecting mothers, right? If you are expecting, if you are with child, it's the Bible term, it's not pregnant, you're with child, um, this is for you. If you are a current mother with a little one, uh, there are some tips and tricks. The Lord has showed us things that you can do that are, that are again, we're not being elitist here by showing natural ways to do things. The natural ways are much cheaper, much more affordable, and they're much better for the baby's health. And the mother's right? stress level, too. Yeah. So, again, back up a little bit here, this way. So, um, so again... Uh, there's some tips, tips and tricks and things uh, that you're going to be able to learn from this. So, we'll begin. Um, for when we first moved here, it was in the middle of January, and it was very cold. This place did not have heat and everything else. And, and um, so for a while, it's okay, just let it down there. Uh, for a while, we had no idea that my wife was with a child. And... Um, I remember she said the one time, you know, about, am I gaining weight or something? You know, are we eating too much food or something? And at the time, you know, we were hurting for money. And it was like, no, we're definitely not eating too much food. <laughs> you know, and, and God's always provided to you. There again, I see that. She knew about a menstrual cycle stopping? I mean, women know, she know when they're pregnant, the menstrual cycle stops. You know, why don't you get a job and provide for your wife? God's always provided for us. See that? Why don't you get a job and provide for your wife? God has always provided. In other words, you suckers who are giving them money have always provided for them. Okay? So, you know, whatever. And he blushes off. Blushes off there. So run along, you know, go to some other video. Yeah, go to some other video. Second Thessalonians 3 says about if you don't if you don't work, you don't eat. And if you don't take care of your family, worse than a heathen. But uh so, you know, this one night, I remember thinking, and I thought to myself, what if she's with a child? What are we going to do? So she didn't know she was a child. She didn't know a menstrual cycle stuff. <laughs> Incredible. Because, you know, I looked into it in the past. I looked into the thing of natural childbirth thing. I went through a little bit of training and stuff on that. 
And uh, so I knew a little bit about the natural childbirthing thing, but I didn't know a whole lot. And then the one night, I remember, you know, we were getting ready for bed and everything. I looked and I saw movement in her stomach. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, she's pregnant, she saw movement in her stomach. What? <laughs> she's not a big woman. What are you talking about? She didn't know she was pregnant? Whoa. Okay, it's no longer just, you know, what if. It's now, there's a baby. And so we started praying about it and we started to discuss this thing. And it was just like, we're going to do a home birth. And that's just going to be the way it is. We are going to live by faith. And I pray that you do the same. All right. Um, it's, it's best to sell thing. out completely to the Lord. Sell out 100% to the Lord. Yeah. And again, you know, we're not putting people down by saying that. It's called exhortation. You know, people say, oh, you're a leader. It's exhorting the brethren. Okay? But we decided we're going to do things as close to Scripture as we possibly can, and we're going to see. There's nothing in Scripture about natural childbirth. Nothing. He just using an example. So, so, well, Mary and Joseph had their baby in a manger. So let's go ahead and have our baby that way. I mean, it's ludicrous. They didn't have air conditioning back then. We use air conditioning. They didn't have heat, you know, type of central heating. We have heat. They didn't have automobiles. We have automobiles. What, what is he talking about? If the Lord will bless this whole thing. Just say Amish. That's why, you know, Amish don't use automobiles and stuff. It's very Amish like in the mindset. Again, he has. So, were there any ultrasounds in the Bible? No. And ultrasounds, they put off an extreme high EMF field, electromagnetic frequency, and which is carcinogenic. That's why you hear bad things about, the, you know, don't live under power lines or something like this. Um, EMF fields are very, very bad. And there's a lot of people out there that will not have an ultrasound. And again, you say, but what if something's wrong with the baby? Okay, what can you do? Why not? They can do things while the baby's in the womb. What can you do? They can go in the womb if they have heart problems. If they go in and fix it, what can you do? <sighs> Just put your faith in God and say, okay, we're going to trust the Lord on this. And you say, but, but what about, you know, uh, if it's a boy or a girl? Again, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. You know, um, so that was a, a thing. And we started to study this whole thing of natural childbirthing. And there are hundreds, probably thousands of videos online of women uh, in all different countries having children at home. Because they have to. <laughs> the primitive cultures, they have to. They have midwives, too, by the way. And so it was like a great comfort. And as we studied it more and more and saw there's a huge, a huge body of evidence out there showing childbirthing at home is far superior to hospital births. And the reason that for hospital births is because of ignorance. Again, I'll tell a little story on this. Um, I went to Honduras at one point in time. We lived in a little village down there and there were people. And, we, you know, we were taking these little medical bags around to them and stuff, you know, giving them toothpaste and soap and. Uh, Neospore and things like this. And we actually uh, heard later on that these people in this village, because it's an oligarchy in Honduras, if you didn't know that, it's basically rich plantation owners with their slaves living beside the plantations. Chiquita Banana is a big slave holder down there. And so the people are like wretchedly poor and they're ruled over by the rich. Honduras. And so the people. You just want to sing or something, don't you? <laughs> oh, man. Um, so the people down there, uh, they were so ignorant that they were brushing their teeth with neosporin and putting Colgate on their cuts. Now, that's, that's an interesting experience. <laughs> so, but see, what was the problem? They were ignorant. They're not bad people. They're just ignorant. If you had a hospital birth, if you've gone through that whole system and the, all that stuff, you're ignorant. You're not a bad person. We're not condemning you. Okay, so please don't think that. But we started to look into this thing, and we decided, like I said, it was going to be a hospital birth. And the very, you know, hold it for a little bit. The very, very clear advantages. I'm going to show off his little shirt here. And again, you know, oh, it's Nazis or something like that. 
no, we're not Nazis. Nazis you know, are Roman Catholics. Yep, so we're definitely not Nazis. But made in America with German parents. <laughs> these people with German parents. That's what you talk about, kindred. But it says, uh, made in America with all German parts. So, all German parts. Because we're both German. Amen. Same, so. Praise the Lord. But anyway. Yeah. Oh, do it, German. There's nothing scriptural about that. Or German. <laughs> um, so, uh, what was I thinking here? Um, thinking. About we, and again, we had no idea what the due date was. We have, no, you know, no idea. It's just like, we'll trust the Lord. So we got the supplies that we needed, which we'll go over here in a minute. If you're going to have a home birth, again, it's very cheap. It's not I don't want that know when she's pregnant, you know. They have a rough idea when the birth is going to be. I mean, you don't know the day and hour, but you have an idea when your cycle stops. It's expensive. You know, you can pick up this stuff on the internet, eBay, whatever. Uh, you can get it. It's, it's not that much. Can I say what something say? about um, trusting the Lord in, even throughout adversity? Yeah. Well, last summer, summer of 2014, uh, just want to tell this real quick story. During that time, uh, my parents came from Iowa out here to visit us for a few days. And, you know, we ignorantly thought, hey, you know, they can help us with projects and, you know, we'll have a good time. We can learn a lot from them. Well, no, it didn't work out like that. In fact, uh, Marie, my mother, as you already know her name in its whole entirety, uh, one day, uh, Brian and my dad were, were working on some outdoor projects together and uh, and she was in here with me, the two of us, and she started going off on a tangent about, you gotta have a hospital birth, you gotta go to the hospital, you gotta make sure you call the ambulance when it happens. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. And the Lord in his perfect timing, you know, he, uh, you know, times it out that I have to go to the bathroom while she's saying this and in a tangent about you must go to the hospital for birthing you know and uh on my way i picked up a bible one of our one of our bibles king james bible mm -hmm. nothing else and uh i um uh, <clears throat> and with the lord's help i was led to at his prompting i should say i was led to the book of luke and Which, you know, we referred to this earlier, but we'll just turn the verse because I know that there might be some women that are watching that don't believe the Bible or, that, you know, they think, well, the Bible is just an old book. It's not relevant to today. Or that it's archaic. Yeah. Go ahead. Read um, the verse. And in chapter two of the book of Luke, these are the verses, the seven verses that I read to her, literally showed to her with her saying over my shoulder, um, starting with verse one. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Hmm, interesting similarity to today. Uh, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, firstborn son, mm -hmm. and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So she points the firstborn son to him, like, yeah, okay, you have a firstborn son, but it's not, it's not related to Jesus Christ. And uh, the Lord put the interesting question in my head as I was reading those verses to her and she stood next to me. You see why it was born in the manger? Because there was no room in the inn. They didn't choose it to be in the manger. There was no room for them in the inn. It was the show, of course, that our Lord came in the world with total poverty. Me looked over my shoulder and read along with me and I asked her bluntly, I said, where in those verses do you see anything about a hospital, medical center, medical clinic, doctor, or whatever? And she said, hmm, nowhere. 
And I said, uh, oh, and see those verses about all the world being taxed? Doesn't that sound familiar to today? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah. It does not do with anything. The issue is childhood, and the issue was in the Old Testament, constantly midwives were used. And they would do use stools. They weren't even on the bed. They used stools. It does. And praise the Lord, she didn't say a single word about, you got to go to the hospital for birthing. <gasps> because in today's society, uh, delivering a baby is called an emergency medical procedure. Right. And, and, and her mouth literally stopped. I yep. mean, I, I kid and, you not. And just, just you know, to, to continue with this, go to that next, go to, go to here. First look up that one. Um, just to continue with this, again, you know, this is one of the big problems with the hospital childbirth. Because you go in, it's an emergency. They're taking you in. You know, you're going through all this stuff. It's, a, it's this sterile environment. I hate the smell of a hospital. It's just disgusting. And, you know, you go in there and it's just like emergency, emergency, you know, and, and you're hearing all this noise and stuff. And a woman who is in travail, as the Bible says, in labor, uh, there's a lot of things going on there with her mind and stressing her out even more is going to make problems. So, again, and this is one of the biggest arguments, in my opinion, against hospital birthing, and that is the single most toxic thing to the body of people, to your body, is stress i firmly believe that i believe you can even live on a poor diet and if you don't have much stress you're going to live longer than somebody that eats perfectly and has lots of stress uh, stress is very very toxic so when you have a woman going into the stressful situation of a hospital she's on this emergency table there's lights on her there's all kinds of people she's going where's my husband at where's my husband at you know all this stuff there's going to be complications with that childbirth but in the privacy of your own home, where you can put on, you know, we're going to get into a little bit of, of some of the techniques and things like this. And it's a low stress environment. It takes the danger level of a lot of complications down significantly, way down. Okay. Very important. But there's another spiritual tie in to this thing of a woman giving birth. Go ahead and read it. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, you see this thing of you know, if you go back to the Garden of Eden, if you really understand what the story was about, it wasn't that Eve took the, the forbidden fruit and because she wanted to be a god in her own right. Um, she listened to Satan. If you don't know the story, you can read about it in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, it wasn't that she was deceived and then Adam was deceived also. Adam saw what she did. He knew that she had disobeyed God and he decided to die with her. She was the one who was deceived. But... God doesn't look down at a woman and say, oh, you're trash, you're no good at all. No, he actually has children be born through the woman. And the thing of, of why did he do that? Well, she wandered away from her husband. Whereas if you have a child, if a woman is with a child, and she relies upon her husband more than the medical establishment and things, there's going to be that's a much stronger tie there. Uh, there was no stranger looking at my wife. And, and and multiple strangers looking at my wife. It was myself. And there were no threats from the medical getting saying, well, if you don't do, if you don't vaccinate your child, yep. are we going to have to call and, the, and the CPS and the whisking, law enforcement on Right. And whisking him away to give him shots so we don't know about to take his blood and, mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And it goes on in the hospitals. Again, they're giving, they're giving mm -hmm. newborn babies hepatitis shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, the vaccine thing is out of hand. I mean, there shouldn't even be any vaccines, but the point is, it's totally out of hand. Again, stress, stress, stress. What does that do, not having midwives? That's biblical. If you're going to have a baby at home, why can't you use midwives? That's totally scriptural. The idea that the husband is going to deliver the wife, that's not, no way you see that in scripture. So that's that's where the, you know they're getting uh, uh, trying to put you know pull this on that like it's just that the husband has been involved in it. 
that uh, midwives isn't the usual way of doing it. Let me go ahead and uh, put this up and uh, we'll deal more with it. It's insane. It's insane. I don't know. No one's more against medical issues than me. Hospitals and all that junk. No, I know that is a bunch of blood. These people are off the rocker. He wants to say it's just. He wants to ignore the midwives issue. Okay, you have to have somebody there that can help in a time of emergency. Who knows about childbirth? And the idea is she's just going to do it and compare himself to Joseph and Mary. You know, so, well, we don't know who was at that birth besides you know, Mary and Joseph. It just says they had, they had the, 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 the birth date. Don't, we don't know. They had any help. Mary had any help? Doesn't say. We'll stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.